Part 1. Understanding Disorganized Attachment Style Chapter 1. What is Disorganized Attachment? Attachment styles are how people attach themselves to others, as described in pediatrician John Bowlby's attachment theory. They range from secure to avoidant to disorganized and are based on early experiences with caregivers or parents. Secure attachment is characterized by a positive relationship between the child and their caregiver. Avoidant attachment comes when the caregiver is unavailable or neglectful of the child, such as a parent who doesn't hug their child often enough. Certain coping styles, such as control or hostility, are associated with these attachment styles. Disorganized attachment is characterized by not forming attachments. Children who are abused become disorganized because they don't know how to or don't want to form attachments with others. Attachment theory was developed to understand why children form bonds in the way that they do. It has since been used to explain what happens when a child forms an attachment between themselves and another person when abuse occurs, as well as how relationships with their parents can affect them for life. In the 1970s, Mary Ainsworth and colleagues began the Strange Situation Test to study the ways parents interact with their children and how that changes when their child is removed from them. They separated the behaviors into organized and disorganized attachment patterns. The organized pattern is characterized by a child that stays close to their parent or caregiver, uses them as a safe base, or cries when taken away from them. The disorganized pattern is when a child does not use the parent or caregiver as a safe base and may not connect with them at all. They may become confused or frightened and show these emotions with behaviors such as freezing, clinging, hiding, or struggling. In addition to this, the child may also appear fearful of the parent, but may also seek comfort from them. Overall, it appears that children with disorganized attachment styles have had caregivers who are abusive toward them in one way or another. Generally, parents or caregivers of children with disorganized attachment patterns have caused the child to form these patterns. For instance, the children may develop a disorganized attachment pattern after they're abused by someone close to them. These abusive actions include but are not limited to neglecting, ignoring, or physically abusing them. Many children who are neglected usually feel as if their parents are simply not there for them, causing them to become disorganized. These children don't know where to go when they feel frightened or upset and aren't supported by their parents. As time goes on, these children begin to feel more isolated from their caregivers and may even begin to resent them. They may also make their caregivers the target of their anger because it is easier for the child to focus on the parent than on the physical or emotional abuse that has occurred. The disorganized attachment style is related to how people cope with problems and develop defensive styles later in life. These defensive styles are ways that a person protects themselves against threat by reducing personal vulnerability or by gaining control over potential threats. This coping mechanism is based on the way a person learned to deal with their early experiences with caregivers. If a child is raised in an environment where they are abused, neglected, or mistreated in other ways, they may develop a defensive style to protect themselves from threat. This coping style may be apparent while the person is still very young, depending on how they were treated by their caregivers. Disorganized Attachment in the Brain and Development It is estimated that at least 12% of children are affected by disorganized attachment. This means the child's brain does not produce a coherent, organized system of functions for understanding, regulating, and responding to interpersonal relationships. What causes this to happen? One factor is a child having too many caregivers or multiple carers with different ways of responding to their needs. 
This can confuse the child into not knowing who they should attach themselves to for safety and love. Another factor is when the caregiver does not use enough calming, soothing, and reassuring words and actions. The child does not know what they're doing wrong to cause their caregiver to be angry and upset. Many studies conducted prove that attachment disorganization is caused by these two factors. A child's brain chemistry develops through the two main stages of infant development, from birth to around age two and from two to three years old. The first stage of development we're all familiar with, the bond stage. This stage is when a baby starts to show an attachment toward its mother. The bonding phase occurs between the time a baby is born and the age of two years. This bonding period helps the baby recognize that it is loved and important. It also helps prepare the baby's brain for later attachment. This is put into action when a baby feels safe and secure in its caregiver. The brain recognizes that it is cared for and loved. The baby will begin to feel more in control. It will be able to have a more stable, healthy nervous system, moods, and emotions. The bonding brain changes become permanent with the second stage, the maintenance stage. When babies reach the age of two, they start to show attachment through the maintenance stage. This is when a child starts to explore their environment, learn about their senses, and begins understanding what they can do in life. This is the stage when the child begins to attach with multiple caregivers and others in their environment. The child needs the support of a variety of caregivers who can offer love, attention, and comfort to help them learn how to trust others. This helps prepare the brain for future relationships. This is when children really need a lot of adult support so they know they are loved by many people. If this doesn't happen, there's a chance that their brain will lose information about being attached. This can lead to depression, anxiety, and problems with how they feel about their own behavior. The third stage, maintenance and bond combined. In this stage, a child learns new ways of being in relationships. They'll start to have more complex thoughts, emotions, and understand what is safe for them. When children reach around the age of five to six years old, they will start the second stage again, the maintenance stage. This is when they start to show a different kind of attachment. They'll start to show this attachment to a special person, usually mom or dad, who helps them learn how to be in relationships. These relationships help the child understand how others feel and express their needs. This stage goes on into adulthood. The importance of healthy brain development. When children don't get enough support from their caregivers to help them develop this second stage of bonding, they will not be able to do so as easily. When children are learning how to manage their emotions, they need someone to help guide them. If their brain is not developing correctly from the lack of support, they will not be able to use their social skills and problem solve when they need to. They will not be able to regulate their emotions when there is a problem in life and need help from others around them.